What's up guys, it's Matt with bleepinjeep.com. Today we are working on this four link kit for the scorpion crawler project here. So uh, we're gonna try and put that on today. Now I'm not gonna tell you who made this kit. You can probably find it if you're really interested, but I've had nothing but a negative experience so far, but uh, I'm still gonna make it work. Um, for one, it took me a month and a half to get this thing in the mail, and that was with uh, calling and begging and uh, emailing and trying to get this thing. Once I did finally get it, the instructions were backwards and some pieces were missing and I still haven't gotten those pieces so I'm just going to have to make them myself. But um, I don't know what's going on there guys, but uh, follow along and let's see if we can uh, put this thing together. I've already got it tacked up here. Now the thing is, on the Cherokee frame, it's got a little crook in it. and. Um, if you remember the uh, the uh, rough stuff frame strengthener video that we did, um, those have cuts in it so that you can bend it to accommodate the bends in the Cherokee frame. This thing is completely straight. It doesn't have any bends in it. So what I figured I would do is uh, hold this up next to the rough stuff piece, mark the same spots, cut those, and that way I can bend it up uh, and, and match it to the frame. Otherwise, what you have to do is just kind of pick a spot because right now it can either go this way or this way or in the middle. So you would just have to pick a spot and weld it up. I'm not real happy with that, so what I'm going to do is cut it, bend it, and that way it matches perfectly with the stock frame. So let's do that. All right, so here is one side of the kit. It's actually pretty well made. If the customer service wasn't so bad, I would actually recommend this. But uh, let me show you the bottom. So it's a double triangulated four link setup. You've got links that are going to come out here and here, and then on the op opposite side as well. And this is designed for a Cherokee. So, um, now one of the problems I had was figuring out which end was the front. Um, the directions were backwards. This is actually the front side right here, and this is the rear. So, I'm glad I figured that out before I actually um, welded it up on there. So it's got some braces here for the um, that's the lower links and the upper links, and it goes right around the channel of the frame. It makes a channel around the frame and stiffens the frame at the same time that it holds your links. Now these are the links from Rough Stuff over here, which we did a video earlier on, and I could use both of these together, but there's no reason for me to have that much stiffness on the frame. Alright, so I've lined it up right here on the front. Now if you guys are going to be making your own stiffeners or making your own four link or whatever, let's just go ahead and measure this for you. Uh, that band is right at 22 and 3 eighths and then 29 and 3 eighths. So all I need to do is mark here and here with a sharpie on both sides and then we'll go ahead and cut it. So this one on the right here is actually going to bend this way so I just need to make a cut because it's going to open, but on this one I kind of need to make a V because it's going to close and if I just make a single cut it'll hit each other so I need to uh, make a little V that way it can fold up and uh, not contact right there at the top. Alright so I've cut both sides, this one just a straight line, this one I've got a little V going on now let's put it under there, we'll bend it up in the shape that it needs to be, then we'll tack it in place, that way it'll stay there, and uh, we'll go from there. There it is, it's not a lot, but I've got two jacks up under here pushing up on these, and you can see right there where the frame comes across, goes down, and then goes back across. Now this is where I had cut the V, and this is where I had cut the straight line, so you can see the difference. Uh, this one spread out, and this one pushed in. So now all I need to do is tack these up. Uh, I don't want to weld them right here because 
I'm not ready to weld this thing onto the frame yet but I need to tack these up and uh, also if I've already done this but I've ground the uh, frame up here so that whenever I do weld I will have a nice solid spot to weld on and no dirt up in there. So for right now I'm just going to tack that up on the corners here. I'll use some uh, scrap steel I have lying around just to tack this here uh, so it doesn't move when I take it off. I still need to weld up all the bracketry and stuff and uh, I, can't, I don't know if you can see these holes but uh, you're supposed to cut these holes out and go all the way through the frame rail with some tube so I might end up doing that too. Now, when I take it down, hopefully it'll stay in that position. Let's uh, get this jack out of the way. Let's tack up this back side too for good measure so it doesn't move. Alright, now I can go ahead and try to weld that up. What I really need is a what they call a brass spoon. You can hold it on the back and weld that up and it won't stick. Uh, I don't have that so Let's just try to fill the gap, I guess. Alright guys, after some welding and some grinding, we've got this piece on this side finished. Now let's do uh, this side. Well there it is! Check it out! Alright, I think it's time to weld this sucker up. Now I'm going to skip around so I don't get it too hot. But uh, I think what I'll do, when I weld on the outside here, it's going to try to pull that direction. So I'm just going to stick a clamp right here. I'm not going to tighten it real tight. I'm just going to let it sit there snug. That way when I weld right here, it won't try to, it won't pull it, or it won't be able to pull it. So. Let's do it.
Okay, check this out, guys. Now, you always want to use some kind of a spacer right here. This is the lower control arm mount, so this uh, big heim joint goes in there. But when you're welding, things get so hot that it wants to move the metal. So I got this spacer from uh, TMR Customs. So it's just the right width. It's a little bit wider than this. And it's made out of aluminum. You can get them in different sizes on the hole on the inside diameter. And what you want to do is put that in there and bolt it down before you go and weld anything. I've already welded just from welding the other side. I didn't even touch these. And it's in there so tight that I can't even move it by hand. So that shows you how much that metal is moving around. But you want to put a bolt through there and bolt it down too because uh, it doesn't work unless you have it clamped because when I weld over here, it's going to try to separate these tabs. So, put a bolt there. I bet you anything, once I uh, weld on both sides of here, I'll have to get a wrench just to get those, that bolt out. So, uh, let's do it. Okay, let's see. Yep, I can't get that off. I'm gonna have to get a wrench for one. It is very hot. Ow! Ow. thing is very hot. Alright, I've got a lot more welding to do, so I won't bore you with that, but uh, I'm going to weld this thing up and then check back with you later. Just remember, make sure whoo, to use a spacer when you start welding on stuff like that. That needs to be very precise. Check it out. Now despite only taking a couple minutes on camera, that actually probably took me four hours or more to weld all that up. Uh, this is the day afterwards. Uh, I let it cool down and I forgot to weld these pieces on so I did that just this morning. And so this is what you're left with. You can see that bend that I made right there so I think it'll fit a lot nicer. Cleaned it up with the, uh, the flap wheel, got all of the little speckle off, and I smoothed up the uh, tops here where I had welded those uh, little pieces shut. And I think that's it. I have a whole other side to do, so I'm going to do that here in a minute. But last night, I was thinking about my skid plates. Um, and so I had an idea of while I have this off and before I weld it up, what I can do is I can cut a hole in these and weld a nut on the back side. Then when I, before I weld it up to the frame, I can just drill a hole in the frame so that that nut can recess inside there. But what I can do with that is uh, when I make my skid plate, I can just use a bolt and go right inside there instead of having to weld it on or, or make some other kind of bracketry. I can just have that nut on the inside of the frame rail. So, um, after I make the other one and I put them up there, I will uh, mark those, take them back off, and do that. Because um, I really need to know exactly where they need to be. I know I'll probably have a skid plate between here and here, but maybe I'll just make some nuts over here for future use if I decide to find something for future use, like a I'm not sure how far I want to go forward and backward on this thing as far as skid plates. But it would be nice to be able to mount my engine skid plate uh, from here using those nuts. So, back to work I go.